So uh, I'm a neurologist at King's College Hospital and I, um, I work on motor neuron disease and I am one of the four consultants that you know, see patients with MND, also known as ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. And this is a currently incurable motor neuron disease that causes paralysis. It kills about 2,000 people each year in the UK. And it overlaps significantly with this other disease called frontotemporal dementia. And that's characterized, as you can see here, by kind of striking selective atrophy of the frontal and temporal lobes of the brain. That causes executive dysfunctions. Rather than motor problems, it causes changes in behavior. And one of those changes is hyperphagia, and changes in food intake and food preference, and that can cause weight gain. And both diseases are characterized by pathological inclusions of this protein called TDP43. It's really interesting RNA binding protein normally present in the nucleus in disease. It's moves out into the cytoplasm of both motor neurons in the spinal cord and cells in the brain as well. It's also character characterized by mutations, so the protein itself can be mutated and that is linked to disease as well. But the mechanisms by which the mutations cause disease are unclear. So what we did was we made a new model of motor neuron disease, or ALS, FTD, by introducing a mutation of TDP43 into the mouse TDP43. So this is the first a mouse model of its kind. There's been about 20 or 30 different mouse models, all of which are transgenic. In other words, they overexpress the protein. What we did was we created a single point mutation because the mouse gene, as you can see here, looks almost exactly the same as the human gene. And then we decided to phenotype this. We published this last year. And I'm just going to take you through two slides, one of behavior and then the other of some molecular stuff. So as I said, ALS and FTD overlap. So we decided to look at both motor aspects and cognitive aspects. And on, on the top here, you can see this classic rotor rod where you've got five animals on this rod that gradually accelerates and the animals fall off. And that's a crude measure of their motor function. The longer they stay on, the better their motor function is. And that's what we found. So in green, you have the normal mice. In blue, you have animals that have one copy of the mutation. And in uh, magenta, you have the homozygous mutant mice. And the, the, the green mice stay on for longer than the mutant mice fall off more quickly as they age. However, what we found was that these mutant mice are actually heavier. So rather than losing weight, they're actually gaining weight. And what it turns out is that they're only falling off because they're fat. They're not actually paralyzed. They're just gaining weight. And the reason they're gaining weight is that their food intake is going up. So all we did was we just measured the, the food hopper in the cages, uh, in, in cages that had pure genotypes, so either mutant mice or wild type mice. And the mutant mice are eating more. So we got the idea that this is perhaps more of an FTD mouse model than an ALS mouse model. So we, in parallel, we had a second group of mice that had this cognitive screening. This was done at uh, the Department of Psychology in Cambridge University. We had collaborators there. This work was done largely at the Babraham Institute. And they used touchscreen operant chambers. So the, the mice are trained to respond to light cues in these small boxes. And then what we tried to do is to assess their attention, perseveration, um, impulsivity, compulsivity, as well as their motor function, because there are infrared beams in this box that indicate how quickly the animal touches the light and how quickly it responds and gets a food reward. So they're basically trained by, um, in this box. And during the training process, we found that the mutant mice take a bit longer. So some of the mice are pretty good, but some of the mice are pretty slow. And then when we actually did the, the formal testing, what we've got here is the rate of omissions. In other words, that's how often the mouse is not actually even responding to the light. In other words, it's not paying attention. And attention is one of the things that the frontal lobe is really important for. And the, the mutant mice here, you can see they are high. In other words, they are, they are omitting more. They are less attentive. And this, again, suggested to us that they have an executive dysfunction rather than a motor dysfunction. This work was done by Matt postdoc in my lab, and Osu, who's um, postdoc and psychiatrist with Tim Bussey in, in Cambridge, who's now gone back to South Korea. So the question is, why are these mouse showing this behavioral change? So what we did was we analyzed the frontal cortex. We looked at the motor neurons, but we found more interesting stuff going on in the frontal cortex. And this is RNA sequencing data. Vertically, you can see data from, that's one mouse here. This is another mouse, and we, did, we looked at six wild-type mice, six heterozygous mice, and eight homozygous mutant mice. And anything in blue here is a gene that's re relatively down-regulated, and anything red here is a gene that's relatively up-regulated. We looked at both gene expression and gene splicing. And one of the most interesting observations we made was that there was actually an increase in the amount of TDP43. So we found 
without deliberately overexpressing TDP43, that there's actually more TDP43 RNA in these mouse brains. And what we also found, and this is a Western blot looking at the protein level, here we have two representative wild type mice and two representative homozygous mutant mice. These black bands here are darker, and that's because they have more TDP43 protein. It's the RNA that makes the protein. So we have more RNA and more protein. And I'll come back to that in a moment. So it looks like TDP43 is present in these brains at higher levels. And one of the consequences of that is that we see a change in tau splicing. Uh, a lot of you will know that tau is linked with neurodegeneration as well, in particular with Alzheimer's disease and frontotemporal dementia. And what we see is that we have an increase in the level of inclusion of exons two and three of tau. This is at the end terminus of tau, which is not the focus of attention for a lot of people who work on tau. They usually focus on three repeat and four repeat tau. So that was one of the splicing changes that we saw. And basically, the, the reason that it's important to be aware that the TDP43 RNA and protein are both up is that this should not be happening. And the reason it shouldn't be happening is that TDP43 autoregulates. What it does is it normally controls its own expression. And it does that by influencing its own splicing. The protein, TDP43, when it's at high levels, will bind to its own RNA and destroy it. And clearly what we're seeing in our mouse is that that system has failed. So what we think here is that there's a critical disturbance in autoregulation. And one key observation we've made since then, which we haven't published, is that human cells have the same phenotype. 